So here's my plan. I'm gonna buy a new Tarmac SL8 frame, fully knowing that there's a strong possibility that I don't like it as much as my current Tarmac SL7. Let me explain why. The first big point that everyone's talking about is just the weight of this frame. It's apparently going to be crazy light. And the numbers that have been thrown around are something like sub 700 grams in a ready to paint frame set. That's in a 56 and that's pretty dang impressive. The second big claim that we're seeing, and maybe this is no surprise, is that the SL8 will be more aerodynamic, but some are claiming that it's gonna be more aerodynamic than the outgoing third generation Venge. And I suppose if you look at some of the spy photos and you look at the more slender seat post and the new head tube, and maybe if you pair those with the Revol Rapide one piece bar stem combo, I could see how you could get there. I mean, they're gonna take advantage of the new UCI rules. The third big point that everyone's floating around there is that it's more stiff and also more responsive. Again, this would kind of fall into that narrative of like the Venge and the Athos combined, right? You get the refined handling characteristics of the Athos, but you may get the responsiveness and the stiffness of the Venge. And if the geometry charts that I've seen online are correct, I think this moves the tarmac into a, what I would call a modern geometry category, something like the Envy Melee. See, with that taller head tube, you need fewer spacers underneath of your stem. And if nothing else, you get a more aesthetically pleasing look on your high performance road bike. So what does that mean for us normal folks, right? The everyday athletes. I've had a chance to ride a ton of bikes over the years, and it's my belief that you would be hard pressed to find and notice each of these individual improvements. But as a total package, well, at best you might notice a better bike, and you would definitely notice that it is different based on the specs that I've seen thrown out there. So how will this compare to the SL7? See, I've said before, and I'll say it again, that I think that it's going to be very difficult to beat the SL7. And that's coming from a guy who's logged over 15,000 miles on two different SL7. And going back to my plan, well, I'm gonna buy the SL8 frame and I'm gonna judge it against the SL7. I'm gonna do a handful of comparisons, put 500, 1,000 miles on it, and then I'm gonna decide which one I should keep. So consider me your R&D department for the SL8. Anyways, if you're interested in the bike, in the build, in the comparison between the SL7 and even like the Athos and other bikes that I've ridden over the past few years, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel. And to all you guys who are on these message boards who are like sharing this information, dude, I don't know what you guys do as day jobs, but thanks for keeping me up at night as I constantly refreshed my browser because you guys were posting so much information about this bike. Anyways, until next time.